Anyone who went to high school knows it's better to be part of the in crowd. After all, no one wants to be an outsider. A target. So how does this make you feel? Pretty uncomfortable, right? Direct eye contact sends a powerful message. We may be in danger. So let's take a long, hard look at this stress-inducing experiment. A few regular guys have brought their cars in for an oil change. But things are not going to pan out exactly as expected. Thanks to evolutionary neurobiologist Mark Changizi. Here we're interested in watching as people's conformity falls apart as they realize that they're no longer part of the crowd that they naturally want to be part of. In this waiting room, he's brought a couple of actors. His goal? To see exactly what happens when they start staring at this subject. No holds barred. All right, so this is going to be where it all happens. The subject is going to be seated here. In the beginning, you're going to try to make them feel part of the group. We're going to break that conformity basically by having you stare at him. Then we're going to ramp it up all the way and you're not going to be covert anymore you're just going to look at him and so basically you're saying we're looking at you and we know that you know we're looking at you and we don't care we've got hidden cameras there here here another one over there all right you guys ready to make someone squirm all right let's do this this is going to be a head trip uh tilt down mark directs the action from hidden tv monitors as the first subject enters the garage come over here and sit down right there so we've got the new Mark. He's just sitting down, just getting comfortable. You gotta come here one time to take care of you. Step one, make the subject feel like part of the group. So I'm Mercury. Oh, wow, that's All original, paint everything. I like to work out. So I just sanded it, painted it. That's oh, nice. The mini bar in there, you're set. Yeah, yeah. They're really forming a group here, talking about his interest in fixing cars. They're real part of a team now. Step two, now we separate our subject from the group by having the owner give him, and only him, a discount card. I got this thing for you. $25 is going to come off your tab. Oh, okay, thank you, buddy. Pretty cool. Now we're going to start slowly raising the pressure. Mark sends the actors a message. Time to start staring. We've only had goodness so far. Positive feelings coming from all around. Now that's going to slowly go away. <laughs> Our subject tries to laugh it off, but he's getting nervous. He's wondering why there's more eyes on him. Now he's hiding in his cell phone. He can feel the stares. How? Like all of us, his brain's cerebral cortex is fine-tuned to pick up staring. One, you have special mechanisms in your brain that are highly sensitive to the looks of other people. You have eyes that are designed to tell them that you're looking at them. Humans are the only mammals who have whites of the eyes, designed to be extra easy to spot. The eyes themselves have evolved to be social signals. Brain cells fire when someone stares right at you. When you look at a person, it's just like touching them. And that's just what our subject is feeling. He's sensing that the gravity in the room has changed. Now the staring gets intense. With this group stare, we're hoping to push this mark out of the tribe. Our subjects just entered the zone of nonconformity. What the f <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Finally, it's too much to take. Oh, he's going outside. Going, out the back. It seemed he was uncomfortable. He quickly realized everybody was staring at him. <laughs> Hey there, you did a good job here. <laughs> <laughs> did everything we expected. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks. I owe, I owe you, man. When I stood up and I felt uncomfortable at the end because the guys were staring at me, I said, is there anything on my face? What's going on here? When the brain senses staring, it sends up a flare. You've just been isolated from the group. Then, right here, the anterior cingulate cortex starts firing signals. The messages quickly reach the left orbitofrontal cortex, right here, triggering what's known as the fight or flight response. And there he goes. Let's see if others react the same way. This guy starts to sweat and fidget. What the hell is going on here? And he's gone.
How about this guy? Nope. He can't hack it either. This guy lasts longer than everyone else. Come on, guys. How are you? His secret? The see no evil technique. He's completely covering his eyes. Make it all go away. He's putting his hands over his face. This is not happening to me. That's why everybody's looking at me. Yeah, I think we need to go down. He's getting very nervous. And there it is. Three for three. One tough guy after another. All brought down by a simple stare. Thank you for being such a good sport. I'm uh, March. I am the scientist on this is a Discovery Channel show. Oh, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> and you're part of an experiment. And what did it feel like? And what were you experiencing when you saw that there were eyes on you? It, it's really funny. My, my heart, I'm like, my heart's still beating like really fast. Like, <laughs> I thought I did something. I thought it was something. Something was going on. That's what. That's what I thought was happening. So. You guys creep me out. Oh, wait, I just want to get my oil changed. <laughs> it could be at the garage, or the library, or the gym. Wherever you go, the pressure to fit in, the need to conform, is there. And you, you'll cave under the pressure every time. So thanks for watching our show. We're glad you loved it. Of course you loved it. Everyone else did. Now stick around and watch the next 24 hours of programming on Discovery. All of America will be doing it. All your friends are already tuned in. You don't want to be left out. Do you? So as we've just seen, we're hardwired to follow the rules no matter how ridiculous. And as Saul's just shown us, nobody gets you to follow the rules quite like a person in a uniform. So that got us thinking. Would a person get a different level of respect based entirely on what he wears? We set up hidden cameras in this barbecue restaurant. We want to see if people will be compelled to respond to another unusual request. Will they give up their table to someone just because he's wearing a uniform?